here. Pastor Cliff Smith. And our producer, director, all-around good guy, Jerry Wales, behind the camera. Uh, we're happy to be uh, coming to you today live from the, where are we? Beautiful Gate. That's it. The Beautiful, Beautiful Gate. Gate Cafe. Uh, we come here every Thursday mornings. Uh, if you just want to get autographs, you can come yeah. hang out yeah, here and get, free. Uh, free. get the three autographs. Get, get a picture with us. Right. Um, uh, we come down here, drink coffee, and uh, then we share with you. Uh, but the reason we come down here is to support Corey. And right. she's got a, a great ministry going here. First of all, it's great coffee and food and atmosphere, good worship music. Come down, have your devotion time, have some tea, whatever. Uh, but then the proceeds go to help missions around the world. And every month she writes a, a very nice check to one of the missions. She's even got a map up of the places she's already invested in. And uh, this month the money's going to go back to uh, Jordan uh, to help uh, needy children in Jordan. And uh, that's in the Middle East, if you don't know where that's at. Jordan, Not Jordan, Georgia? Not Jordan, Georgia. Okay, I thought no, a lot of a lot of sand, camels. <clears throat> well, Joe, what's on your mind this week? Well, I thought we'd start with <clears throat> just give you some encouragement. We we've, we've been tough on you the last few yeah. weeks, and so the story of David and Goliath. We kind of referenced it in the message this past weekend, but it's in First Samuel seventeen. So go go look it up. I'm always amazed that go back. You've read something a thousand times, and you go back, and there's always something new. Uh, I was listening to Ma Malcolm Gladwell, and he's a nationally known, internationally known speaker, and he just brought out some real insights about this. And you can go look it up on YouTube. But, but what I wanted to focus on is the idea of what David did in this story, and. Without stealing Malcolm's whole message, the, the long and short of it is there were three different kinds of battle that went on in that time. Saul's the king of Israel, and you had, you had the men on horseback that would rush in, scare you to death, stick you with a, with a <laughs> spear. Um, then you had the infantry, which is the real tough guys, kind of like the Marines of today. That's who Goliath was. But then you had the guys in the back, and the guys in the back were archers and slingers, and uh, that's they've got not swingers, slingers, and uh, they're they're uh, they're they're excellent marksmen with their bow and arrow and and with their slingshots. And what Malcolm pointed out, and this is where we're going to go, is that David never intended to fight Goliath on his terms. Goliath is ready to brawl. Come on, come on over here, boy, so I can can I can feed your bones to the birds. David never once had any thought of going hand to hand with Goliath. That would have been stupid. He was fighting a totally different kind of war. Cliff, won't you explain that to him? Well, <clears throat> it, when you read that, Saul took his armor, and Saul was a big guy, and tried to put it on David and give him a sword. And if David had tried to wear that, he could not. He could move. Period, because that wasn't who David was. But as you told me that story this morning, I began to think about how we, as Christians, uh, the army of God, how we come against the world. Uh, we burn abortion clinics and we kill abortion doctors in the name of the Lord. Is what they do that way. Uh, now those are few and far between. Few and far between. However, you, we can't use the warfare and the ways that the world is using. We just simply have to be fresh, uh, take the initiative, and uh, you know, there's a thought that whoever controls the conversation wins. Uh, I've read that all the time. We are reacting too many times rather than acting. Uh, like I asked you the question this morning, do parents have a, a responsibility in raising their children? Uh, at church, if we're lucky, we get them for an hour a week. The schools are pumping all kind of everything they'll need to fail in life uh, without really educating them. And then the parents probably sometimes spend less time with their kids than the schools. Yeah. So, so do, do we have 
do we as parents have a responsibility for the actions of our children? And again, yeah, and teaching them, and it does, it's no guarantee. No, it's no guarantee, no. but we have a responsibility to God to, to do the right thing. And, and here's my problem, all right? We'll just do confession time here. Um, I think I probably would have been better um, during the time of Joshua. Hey, Joe, see that? Go take that land. Go. Yeah. Well, he still says that, but he, it's done in a different way today. And my problem is I'm, I'm ready. You want to fight? I'm ready. I'm, you know, I'm old. I'm half broken. I got cancer, but I'm I'm ready to fight you. You'd probably, you know, kill me with one punch. But, but that's sort of that's just inbred, I think, in men sometimes. Right. But since I can't do that, I don't always stop and do the war that I, warfare that I need to do uh, to say, you know what, this is going to be won in prayer. This is going to be won through prayer and conversation. This is going to be won in prayer. And then getting out and going, ministering to people who are hurting, who are in abortion clinics, and you know, it's it's the war is is done in a totally different way. But again, David never thought about. No. I'm going to go. He was probably nine feet tall. Let's just be real. And David's not a kid. David's probably 16 years old. Uh, but nonetheless, he's outsized, outclassed. Certainly has no training in military other than killing a bear and a lion. Um, but David had no intentions of going out there and wrestling. No. Because he knew he'd get killed. He probably would have got snapped in half. So David said, I come at you in the name, name. of there the Lord. Go. I'm just thinking that. And, <laughs> you know, and, and then he throws the sling. Right. I mean, there is, there is a physical act that takes place here. Um, but I think the problem is we will let other people set the parameters for the battle, and we've got to guard against that. Exactly. We got to. We have to control the conversation. We have to control the way that we battle. Uh, a lot, I, I, many times, young Christians will come to me and they'll ask me, "Do you have a good book on the cults? Because I want to know everything that they believe." And I, I commend them for wanting to know that. But what I do is tell them, concentrate on learning the truth. And then, if you know the truth of Scripture then it's very easy to look at different beliefs and find out where the true and the false is. And we're not teaching our children, I think, the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe a lot of homes don't know the truth. Uh, an FBI guy said one time the way that their counterfeit experts work is they can look for a millisecond at a bill and know where it's real or counterfeit because they spend all of their time looking at the real. At the real one. At the real one. Yeah. So I think a way to battle the world is the truth, because in this world we hear lies. Uh, in other words, you were saying last night, we've been advised we're going to be wiped off the face of this earth with this first hurricane, and, <laughs> and we who live in Florida, you know, they never say we have weather. It's yeah. storm center yeah. Disaster. No, I, I already know. I'll have to call my mother. I've lived in Florida 35 <laughs> years, and how many storms we had? Two or three a year, probably. Yeah. Every single time there's a storm, I have to call my mom and say, Mom, I know the news says we're all dead, no chance of survival. I say, it's going to rain. Right. Right. But that doesn't make news. No. no. But let me caution you. Please don't run out and buy all the toilet paper and the bread. Uh, out of stores, that's generally what happens. Anyway, back to what we're talking about. <laughs> that's a that's just we won't charge you for that's that. Free. That's, that's free. That's totally free. free. Uh, I want to stick to this truth deal. I I think we take children. I remember when I was a kid. Uh, I just thought kid stuff. The yeah. the real serious issues of life. It was like. I don't know if I was thinking this way, but there's adults to handle that. I wondered if I could go out to play, if I'd have enough money for ice cream, uh, was my friends going to still like me, those kind of things. And we're looking at children at a very early age who are thrown into battling the world. Uh, a woman in the news, a doctor in the news said that in her study, children uh, are at a very early age, she was speaking before five years old, uh, are ready chemically
to be able to adjust into a transgender body because somehow the chemicals they give for to control menopause can be given to them. And there, in other words, what she was saying, they're set up for it. Yeah. They're ready. God created a body ready to so take a change well, anytime he wanted to. So do we let five-year-olds buy cigarettes and beer? Uh, it's amazing. Vote? Maybe Vote. Let them buy a gun? Right. Uh, truth. What is the truth? And I think that's the greatest thing parents can do. And, and don't sit down and say truth one, truth two. You know. Well, let's go, ba let's go back to David. All okay. Right. Uh, there, all right, two things. This, this shooting out in Texas, and the mother comes out with the dumbest comment I've ever heard, you know, she said, please forgive my son. She should have shut up. Yeah. She should have said, I'm sorry, please forgive my son. Instead, she said, my son had his reasons. Yeah, I read that, yeah. What, what reasons? What reasons would anybody have to shoot up a grade school? Well, in today's world, somehow that makes sense to the crazy world, and I would say, based on that kind of parenting, that might have led him there. In the story of David, David is up actually at the battlefront, if you remember right, to bring some bread and some cheese, all right? And, he, and his own brothers are mad that he even came up there. But here's how that story ends. <clears throat> Several times during the conversation, King Saul asked Abner, the head of the army, none of them would go fight right. Goliath. Saul said, who is this kid? Abner said, I don't, I don't know. Nobody even knows who he is. And then finally, after it's over, David said, my dad is your servant. He's Jesse of Bethlehem. Well, somewhere along the line, Jesse of Bethlehem put some good stuff in David. Yes, he did. David knew how to pray. David knew the word of God. He knew the power of God. Um, so to not give Jesse some credit in that story and and, and David's and uh, David's mom, right? Uh, there, there, there's something to be said for what was going on in that story that we'll never know about. I'm thinking it. Did. The truth of life that Jesse and his mom undoubtedly poured into his mind gave him the ability even to stand before King and talk. You know, yeah. a lot of kids today can't really carry on the conversation with each other. Yeah, he actually stood with the bloody head of Goliath, looked Saul in the eye, and said, "My daddy, my daddy serves you and loves God." And I mean, if you, we just had a postcard of that. <laughs> a t-shirt. <maybe>. T-shirt. <laughs> I know. I know. We're warped. Yes, <clears throat> but that's all right. God loves. It. But again, our kids need to be prepared for the battle too. We need to fight right, but we need to teach them uh, the simple truths about how to fight these cultural wars. And yes, it can be. It, it, we stay in the battle with words, with writing, but we also uh, we have to fight spiritually. Right. And we have to walk with them, pray with them, m mirror to them what we are asking them to do. And that's, that's the greatest teacher. Uh, kids can't raise themselves. And now, you know, we've, we've gone back. It's the AK-47's fault. It's uh, mentally diseased. We've got all of this culture, these things, neighborhood, culture. school. He was a bully. He was bullied in school. And probably all of that's true. Probably is. But at the same time. All this in a nutshell, you're, you're just searching around the service to forget and not to go into the very part, heart of the issue. Kids are valuable. Yeah. Very valuable. They're the most valuable economy in the world. We've had, what, 63 million taken out? Well, that, and again, I'm, my heart is ripped out of my chest about these 19 kids. Yes. Um, but again, the same people that are okay with... 63 million that have died are now in uproar about the 19. If you don't value life, and again, that's something you teach your children. Right. You teach them the value of life, the value, and that all comes from the Word of God. Um, again, I, well, I got an email this week. I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell you by his names, but I got an email basically giving me the, uh, I'll call it the party line. Uh, on abortion, that it's none of my business, it's nobody's business, what other people do, and I wrote, and, and again, with, with no scripture, you know, citing all this other stuff, 
And so I just wrote back, I tried to be nice, I hope I was, but just trying to get them to think, no, here's what the Bible says about life. And if you're going to be a Christian, you need to know the foundational pieces, and your own ideas about something are irrelevant. Right. Well, I was thinking about to my high school days, lived in a little country town, and then the parking lot of our school, uh, you really want a guy until you had a pickup truck, a gun rack, and a, and a gun in it. And our parking lot was filled. But I think it goes back, I can remember my dad told me, if you shoot something, make sure you're shooting it to eat. And I killed a metal lark. I don't even, I think they're just extinct now. They look like a quail. I killed one one time with my BB gun. And that's what I had for supper. And they do not taste good. There's not a lot of meat on them. And I went to bed very hungry. But I learned a very valuable lesson. If you're going to go hunt, which I like to hunt, then make sure you're going to eat what you kill. And that even goes to the value of the life of a metal lark. I think it right. goes beyond. I think it's the value of life. Human at the forefront. We're God's crown and creation. But simply a value of life. I think this guy had a bag full of dead cats. A plastic bag. There's a picture on, mm. on uh, the news with this bag. So no value of life. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, I just thought something different. If a child that are, is very impressionable sees adults, particularly parents who may love, live a lifestyle that says they don't value their life, I, I think that is a, just as, uh, as important as telling them. Well, I'd say, I'd say a lot of kids don't feel like their life is valued. Exactly. They, they grow up just as, they're a bother, and you, you don't have to be out in public very long to see the kids that are treated yeah. that way. Go to any store, you know. And then the, the term, uh, we planned the first one, but the other one was unexpected. Uh, that just puts a little tag that, number one, I'm unwanted, and uh, I'm going to have to struggle to find my place. Uh, I, I don't know. Jesus hung out with children all the time. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, rebuked his big disciples, leave them alone. Yeah. Let them come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. There's a lot for us to learn from them. But again, yeah. I think the danger, and I've read this somewhere, that the kids are being used as pawns for sick people to try to justify their own behavior. And listen, the only way around that is for us to give the real truth exactly. and to put these principles deep inside of our kids' hearts and, and then just pray like thunder that they hold on tight. That's right. Because again, as you said at the beginning, when you follow these principles, those children when they grow up are going to have to decide for themselves right. which way. But it's important that when that, that child goes into a young man or a young woman, Whatever you base the foundation of their life in, that's the way they're going to turn. Right. Uh, they can turn away from truth, but there is this sense that when they get in trouble and find out their way wasn't the best way, what they have come from deep within is the truth. They at least know the other side's still there. I messed up. It wasn't the truth. Let me get back to truth. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Why don't you pray us out? Well, God, I, I pray that I pray that we would begin to think more like David. Mm. I won't lie. I, I, would li I would probably be the one that would have charged into the valley and yeah. Goliath would have killed me on the spot. But I would have somehow felt vindicated that I at least engaged. Yes. And David was smart enough to stand back and to say a prayer and come and come at the giant with the name of the Lord. Yes. And I think of the archangel when he confronted Satan over Moses' body. He said, no, I come at you in the name of the Lord. And Lord, help us to learn to fight the battles on a spiritual front the way you would have us fight. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week. Thank you.